Hi everyone, welcome back to my kitchen. Uh, today we're making shepherd's pie. So shepherd's pie is traditionally made with ground lamb and we're not making a traditional shepherd's pie, but you can do what you like. Today we're using ground beef, so technically it's called a cottage pie, but it's all the same elements. So if you, you're probably familiar with shepherd's pie, it takes a couple of steps. Usually you would have it made with like some leftover mashed potatoes from a big dinner. But today we're gonna do all of the steps. We're gonna cook up our ground beef with some vegetables, and I like using frozen vegetables because they're actually super nutritious and they're inexpensive. So we've got peas and corn and some carrots, some onions and garlic in with the ground beef mixture and our mashed potatoes. So I've already cooked up some potatoes. I left the skins on so we'll make it a little bit easier. We don't need to peel our potatoes, plus when you include the skin on the potatoes, we'll just mash it in. It makes it a little bit more, um, uh, there's more of a texture to it, but then there's more fiber in it too. If you're a diabetic, you might not want to use regular potatoes. You might want to use sweet potatoes, which are sweet, but they're not as high on the glycemic index. So they're a better um, option or even, I've made shepherd's pie with uh, parsnip toppings. So that's even more nutrients than your white potatoes. But today we're gonna do a traditional shepherd's pie um, and we're going to start by cooking up our ground beef. So I've got a little bit of olive oil in the pan. I'm going to let that heat up and I've got one large uh, cooking onion diced up. I've got my oven heating up to 375. So what we do is the two different components get cooked up and the meat and the vegetables kind of get like a nice little tomatoey gravy and that's your base and then we make mashed potatoes and we make mashed potatoes for the top so i've got my potatoes here they're already cooked um, i just boiled them in some salted water and make sure they're all cut up about the same size and you want to be able to just mash them or at least make sure that they're cooked through. So what I'm going to add to my potatoes is this is a mixture of, I just have some half and half cream here because that's what I use in my coffee. I usually use butter, milk, um, and I've got a little bit of Parmesan cheese um, just for some extra flavor. But if you wanted to do dairy free, I've done it with like chicken stock or vegetable stock. You just want enough liquid just so that the mashing is easy and they become a little bit creamy. So this is all mixed in here. I've got some, a little bit of cream, Parmesan cheese, salt, pepper, and a chunk of butter. Okay, so my onions are um, cooked through enough. I'm gonna add the ground beef. Um, I quickly thawed the ground beef this morning in a bowl of cold water. You can put it in the sink under some running cold water and that'll thaw it a lot quickly, or quicker. <laughs> we just wanna break this up and cook it through. Okay, so my beef is cooked through now. You'll see that all the pink is gone. That's how you know it's been cooked through. And I'm going to add some seasoning. I've got um, some chopped up garlic here, some marjoram, a little bit of smoked paprika, salt and pepper, and a little dried sage. You can do whatever 
seasoning you like to use. Um, even just some fresh, fresh herbs if you've got them on hand, some um, dried thyme or oregano, maybe even a little chili powder if you like things spicy. You don't have to do things the way I'm telling you to do them. Do whatever your heart tells you. So I just want to kind of cook the garlic through just a little bit. So this is just, you know, giving it a stir. You're smelling, you're going to smell the spices kind of hit you in the face. And then we're going to add some flour. So I've got a couple tablespoons of flour that's going in and I'm going to mix that up and kind of cook it in the, the oil that's in the bottom of the pan before I add my sauce. So what I have is half a can of um, tomatoes and I've got about a tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce just for some extra flavor. You could put in fish sauce or soy sauce would be nice. A um, little bit of salt and that's going to make your gravy. Um, you can do tomato paste if you don't have tomatoes. I just happen to have like half a can of tomatoes left over, so that's what I'm using. Um, if you don't have anything tomato-y tomato or you don't want tomatoes in there, then um, just leave them out. And you could do some, like a little bit of water or some beef stock or chicken stock, vegetable stock would be good. Okay, I'm gonna this is tomatoes and the Worcestershire sauce. I'm just gonna put that whole thing in there. And that's gonna cook and simmer away. And the liquid will reduce and turn into a bit of a gravy. And then we'll add our vegetables in. Gravy's got nice and thick. And so I'm gonna throw in my vegetables. Oh my gosh. I always make way too much. I feel like this is a lot. This might be a big pan, but that's okay. It's great to have leftovers. This shepherd's pie freezes up really well. So if you don't have time on the night that you actually want this, you can make this like up to three days ahead. You can make the filling and the potatoes, or you can make the potatoes ahead and do it in different um, times. So if you just have time to cook up the meat, um, then cook it up. Put it in the refrigerator and uh, and then finish it a day later or put the whole thing together and don't bake it until the night you're going to uh, eat it so i know it's like a, it's a lot of steps involved but you can kind of do a bunch of it ahead of time if you if you want to okay this looks really good i'm gonna put this in the bottom of a casserole dish. So whatever kind of oven proof dish you have, I have a big casserole dish, like a, a Dutch oven, which I'm hoping it will fit in here. Or you could do like a long baking, um, a baking dish as well. Or save some filling for another time, because that's what I'm thinking is. I overdid it with my vegetables and always wanting way too many vegetables in here. If you don't have um, the frozen vegetables, you can throw in whatever vegetables you have in your refrigerator. Some peppers would be nice. I think mushrooms would be really good. I've made a vegetarian version of um, this, which is like really getting away from the traditional shepherd's pie, where um, the filling is all the same vegetables and um, spices, but you use um, cooked lentils instead of meat, and it's really, really good too. Like really just as satisfying, I think. This is gonna fit. This is gonna be good. So you put your meat and vegetable mixture on the bottom. And then we're gonna put our mashed potatoes on top. You just kind of want to smooth it down and then you're gonna bake it. I've got my oven set for 375. You're gonna bake it probably about half an hour, but really just until you see the meat is kind of like 
bubbling up around the edges of the, the potatoes and the potatoes will get nice and golden on top. So our shepherd's pie has been in the oven for about half an hour and uh, at 375. Bubbly, I'll show you. I'm gonna call this a glorious mess because it did get very bubbly and saucy. It came up kind of up around the potatoes, but I guarantee that's going to be really, really yummy. So that's what you want. And it'll all come together. So if you have a bigger pan, maybe put it in a bigger pan. Anyway, thanks for joining. Happy cooking. See you next week.